The UNAS Pro and Unify Drive have been out for almost a year, and I've been getting a lot of questions about it lately. Is it actually worth buying compared to other pre-built NAS devices? The answer depends on what you're looking for, but after using it since launch, there are a few things that make it stand out. In this video, I'll go over a few ways Unify Drive beats the competition and why it might be the right choice for you. Unify Drive displays data and data protection differently. With other NAS operating systems, you're normally creating a shared folder or a data set, but the options for them are somewhere else in the operating system. This means that you generally have to go and download a separate app and configure it, or go to a separate section in the operating system to configure settings like data protection. For the average user, the folder gets created, it gets accessed through SMB, and that's it. I've met with countless clients who never configured snapshots, and it's a huge miss from a data protection standpoint. And a lot of it is because of how the operating system presents the options to the user. With Unify Drive, you create a drive, and the options for that drive are right in front of you. For something like a storage limit, it's nice to have and easily accessible, but it's not necessarily super important. For things like snapshots, though, it's a legitimate benefit to have it directly in front of you. This ensures that not only can snapshots be configured easily, but you have a higher chance of actually doing it, because you see directly in the drive view if it has or has not been enabled. At that point, drives where snapshots haven't been enabled become apparent. While this might sound simple, this is not the case for almost all other NAS operating systems. And if you don't explicitly know what snapshots are, you might never configure them. Or worse, you might configure them initially, but not remember that you need to do it for new folders as well. So if it's this simple to set them up, how do you even use them and what are the benefits? That's the next area where Unified Drive is just better. With most other NAS operating systems, you need to either mount the snapshot or clone it to a new data set to view the data. With Unified Drive, just about everything you need to possibly use for your data is on the left-hand side with a drop-down menu for your snapshots. This allows you to cycle back through prior versions of your data directly in the same view, meaning current and past data is accessible without ever leaving. Again, this seems small, but when you start comparing this to other NAS operating systems where you're mounting snapshots and trying to navigate through them based on date and timestamps to try and find your files, it just makes sense to do it this way. The data is there, and you can use the drop-down menu to view the prior versions if you need to download or restore anything. and just feels like it's all built in rather than being multiple moving pieces. Snapshots are something that you should be using regardless. So if it's a best practice to set them up, why is it normally in a completely different section of the operating system? This is one area where Unified Drive is just better than the competition at this point in time. But snapshots will only take you so far. And in the event of a hardware issue, you need to make sure your data is backed up somewhere, preferably off-site. This is where things get a little messy because overall, this is probably the easiest backup tool that you can possibly use. You can either back up your data to another UNAS Pro, an SMB share, or a Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox cloud backup with Amazon S3, Backblaze B2, and Wasabi coming soon, which for me, is super important because I back up a lot of my data offsite to Backblaze B2. Now the benefit here is ease of use. And truthfully, it's probably the easiest backup tool to use, but I said it can get messy and there's one reason. Certain NAS operating systems allow you to create a backup that's actually an archive, meaning the backup itself will hold multiple versions and you can restore from any of those versions. The archive itself can be encrypted, which helps with offsite backups as well. So with Unified Drive, what do you get? Well, you get an easy way to backup your data because it's built into the operating system and you don't have to mess with things like rsync, which a lot of beginners won't really understand, though rsync support would be nice. I think that the goal with this is that it's so easy to use that hopefully you'll actually use it. I again have met with many clients that haven't set up backups, so while this isn't a groundbreaking feature at all, and in some cases, 
lacks a lot of the features that other backup utilities have, it's built into the operating system, is easily viewable from the UI, and it just makes sense. Again, it sounds silly, but simply knowing that the data is part of a backup task from the drive view is something that other NAS operating systems can easily do, but they don't. Now we started by talking about data protection with snapshots and backups, but what about using the NAS? A NAS is network attached storage and accessing the NAS and sharing data from the NAS is what you're going to be doing 99% of the time. So how does it stack up? First, accessing the data on the NAS isn't drastically different than other NAS operating systems. But one thing that is a little easier to manage in my opinion is user account permissions. It's not drastically harder on other NAS operating systems, but for small home networks where you're managing a few users, it's very straightforward and intuitive. There's not multiple levels of control. You're basically an owner, editor, or a viewer, and you'll be able to see what each user has access to. Not super granular, and if you need that level of control, you might view this as a downside, but a lot of people don't need that level of control. And managing it in this way can be a benefit compared to other NAS operating systems. With that said, one area where accessing the data is drastically better is when you're sharing data with external people. When I need to share data with someone outside of my local network, I use my UNAS Pro every single time because of how simple it is. If your UNAS Pro is configured for remote access, which basically just means that you're logged into your Ubiquity account, you can set an expiration, access limit, and a password create a link and share it with anyone in the world. There's nothing else that has to be enabled, no applications that have to be installed, nothing that has to be configured. You create the link and send it and they will have access to it. This doesn't seem super valuable, but we live in a digital world and everything is sent over the internet. Rather than emailing sensitive documents to people, create a share, set an expiration with a password and send them the link. You're storing it locally, you don't have to worry about storing the sensitive data in the cloud, and it just works. Now for huge files, the performance is definitely limited based on various factors. But for your average files, this is the absolute easiest way to share files on any NAS operating system with external users. And it's something that I didn't really think that I'd use if I'm being honest, but became my go-to option for sharing these types of files. Which then leads us to the final question. How does the UNAS Pro and Unified Drive compare to other pre-built NAS devices in 2025 with the understanding that a lot of its functionality is built around being a NAS exclusively? Because of what I do with this channel, I am currently running four, yes, it is ridiculous, but four NAS devices. The UNAS Pro, TrueNAS, a Synology NAS, and I'm using a Ugreen NAS as an offsite backup. I just did a Ugreen versus Synology video recently, and I very much like this iteration of UGOS. It's not perfect and there are bugs, but the Ugreen operating system has taken some serious leaps and it's much better than it used to be. For Synology, there are now hard drive and SSD restrictions on their newer devices, which really limits the device. And while Synology DSM is still a great NAS operating system, as of right now, you have to use Synology hard drives with their new devices. And that's a problem for a lot of people. From a DIY NAS operating system, meaning TrueNAS and Unraid, they have a much steeper learning curve for the average person. And that's not taking the hardware into consideration as they're generally not pre-built NAS devices. They're great operating systems, but it's very difficult comparing them head to head with a pre-built NAS. That leaves us with the UNAS Pro and Unified Drive. While technically being less feature rich than just about every other option out there, it has been absolutely rock solid and Ubiquity has been updating it. There's support for multiple storage pools. More backup options are coming like I mentioned earlier. There's a mobile application where you can access your data with Unify Identity and overall, it's really, really good. And in some ways, a better pre-built NAS device than its competitors. Where does it fall short versus its competitors though? Well, it's a NAS. And that term has been blurred as the years have gone on and pre-built NAS devices have slowly been evolving into home servers. For that subset of users that needs their NAS to be a server, meaning you're running applications on it, Docker containers, etc. 
this is probably not the best option for you because it will be a NAS and a NAS only. But for those of you that have a Proxmox server or are willing to buy a mini PC, outside of some advanced services like iSCSI, for the average home user, I still think this is one of the best options you can buy in 2025. And if the UNAS Pro isn't for you, Ubiquiti teased an 8-bay and possibly even a 4-bay NAS in their latest Unified Drive video, so it would seem that more are coming. But overall, I really like it, and I like the fact that Ubiquiti keeps upgrading it but is maintaining stability. There have been updates that have added features, but those features actually work and they haven't broken other features on the NAS. I know that sounds silly to say, but that is very important. It means that from a software development perspective, they're doing the proper QA necessary to maintain stability, which for a NAS is the most important thing. So if you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments. But other than that, thanks again. I'll see you guys next time.